Good afternoon, everybody. We're about to start. Um, I'm presenting you John Samuel, who is uh, part of, who works at the French engineering school, CPE, based in Lyon in France. And he will tell us something more about the translation of properties in Wikidata. Um, as you know, as, in all, as is the case in all sessions, there is an etherpad for, for collaborative note-taking. Please don't forget that. Um, we'll uh, have the presentation and then we all, we'll have some time for a short Q&A. The floor is yours. Thanks, Bart. Uh, uh, thank you all. Thank you all for coming here. So my talk is about analyzing uh, translation of Wikidata properties. So uh, just give you a quick outline. I would like to introduce this topic. I will try present a to tool that I had developed some years before called WDProp, which I'm continuously working and and based on the feedback from the community, I add new features. And then I will talk about something called a coarser analysis, where I would like to look at the property translation from a much larger pic picture. Uh, so I will talk about how I. I collect, how we collected this data, because uh, this work is also done with one of my students, uh, Thibaut Shemar. And then I will present some results, and finally I will conclude the talk. So Wikidata, as you all know, it started in 2012, and it's a free, open, linked, structured, collaborative, and multilingual knowledge base. Uh, my focus today is on the multilingual part. Uh, because there is a big change from the traditional way of how we used to edit on Wikipedia side. There were multi, multiple subdomains, and now you have a single domain on a Wikidata where multilingual contributors come and uh, write or create articles. Uh, so this is a collaborative. There has been work to say what exactly is collaborative, why it is collaborative. Uh, I have given references for these works. So this is, if you see Wikidata, the Everything that starts is started, starting from the property. Uh, they, the property is proposed and then discussed and voted. And then cre it is created and finally translated. And then you are finally able to use these properties. But these properties may also be deleted. There's also something called deletion. But as, as I highlighted on this slide, my focus is on the multilingual aspect and the property creation and translation point of view. So. Uh, you have been here for the uh, past two days, and by this time you have seen many uh, articles. Uh, and I just want to point uh, what am I looking for uh, in this on a Wikidata item. So this is a Wikidata item. So you have this Q2841, which is a uh, Bogota, which is a Colombian uh, it's a city of uh, capital city of Colombia. And you have three or uh, four parts here: the languages, the labels, the description, and aliases. So you can see for different languages, you have the label, you have the description, as well as if there are any aliases also known as, um, you could see them. And there's another city where you see the, la the labels and the properties together. This is Avignon, a city in, um, in, in France. So what I'm interested in is only the properties part. For example, uh, official name, native label, country, capital of, etc. So when I say property, like for example, it's country, in this country I'm looking at different aspects, the language, the label, and the description, and how see how things change. For example, if you take instance of, okay, everybody knows instance of, you have been using it uh, quite a lot. Um, this is uh, P31, you see the number of uh, aliases in English for the uh, property P31 in instance of. But and then you would find that this type of properties, sorry, this type of properties are created after discussion with the community. So if I take the complete pro the procedure, what happens to uh, uh, creation of property, you start proposing properties with some possible translation. It's important. It's not just in English. You have the templates uh, to uh, suggest your properties in your local language. So that's why I said proper proposition with possible translation and then you put it to discussion then you are vote you are put to voting and it's created and then finally some com the community members start translating it and people put it into use but then you cannot be guaranteed that your properties that are created are always there <laughs> forever properties can be deleted just like items can be deleted but then again it goes to the similar proce procedure you put it to you put uh, uh, you put the property as uh, you, you decide, you propose that it should be deleted, and if the community decides it, it votes it, and then if it is decided, the majority votes has decided to 
delete it, we de deprecate the property, and finally we delete this property. So for today's talk, as I said, this is I'm mostly interested for the translation part. So where are the translations happening? First, the translation would happen at the proposition part, and then you could find that at the time of creation, the person who creates the uh, property can use this uh, exact names that was suggested by the uh, property proposer, and he will create the he or she will create the prop uh, the properties, and then people, and later you start translating these properties. So let us look at what what why this matters, why it is important. So they have put some examples. This is. Again, on P31, instance of the very, very famous property, uh, property P31. And you see there is no description for this, um, um, for this item. There are like almost six lay, um, description on this image where we do not have any description. Again, some more description for in Odia Punjabi, there is no description. This is a property which is quite, uh, it's used quite a lot, and you see that there is no description for it. And then, and there is a surprising part that you could also have cases where there are lab there are descriptions, but there are no labels. For example, Rifia that has been shown here, again on property P31, there is a, a label that is missing. So this was the initial inspiration for this uh, work when I started uh, working on property analysis. I wanted to look at uh, if what uh, what aspects of properties or what aspects of property uh, uh, the, the whole the, uh, the whole flow chart that we have seen is comp is multilingual so we sh i wanted to look at okay we know that wikidata is multilingual and it's collaborative that has been done but is it really are we really able to achieve a truly multilingual experience and that was the question behind the creation of uh, wd prop so you may ask why there are so many people who have worked on items there are people who have worked on um, users multilingual users and bots etc why you want to focus on properties because the answer is i want to focus on properties because it's very very less influenced by bots you have you may have heard today or yesterday, many people said, okay, if you have a uh, translation in your local languages and it has exceeded, a, it has reached a very good number, just you should ensure what type of translation it is. Is it just bots which copies the name of a person to another language? Uh, then can, is it really translation? Okay, that's debatable, but of course, there is an influence by bot. But in case of properties, there is not so much influence by bots, and that is a good part. That's why um, I, init I focus on the, on the bots part. Uh, so as I said, uh, when WD prop was created, it was to understand every aspect, the proposal, the creation, translation, what are the templates that are available? Are these templates, for example, you said support, can if a French person opens Wikidata, a Wikidata trans translation page, can he see the word soutien for, uh, for that particular property proposal? Is, the, is it possible? So this type of things was uh, needed. But at, at the end, it was also about giving real-time statistics to the multilingual contributors. It's not about one time, it's like you just made, made it and published it for one time. No, you want people to get this data at the, in real time. So what are we doing? So the, the, gay, the goal of WGProp was to understand everything, everything about Wikidata properties. Uh, so label, aliases, description. So you have got all these three translated. So the, the middle part where you say uh, this property is completely usable because it's every, all the three aspects has been uh, well translated. So uh, let me just show you quickly the, what is this WD Prop I'm um, talking about, WD Prop. So this is WD Prop. It's available on tools.wmflabs.wd Prop. So you have got a, lo a lot of statistics. And if I ask you some questions today, like, for example, how many data types are there that are supported by Wikidata right now? So if such questions we do not know, like sometimes because there are new uh, data types that keep on coming, so this data this this is generated at real time this queries the data uh, structure and it will give you the answer how many languages are there yes of course you see that there are 313 languages and then for example how many how many lab labels were translated so you could see so this is like you you see that the data is being fetched I hope it comes um, okay this hope <laughs> okay 
Okay, I will take some other stuff as well. Browsing all properties by that time. Yes. So you see, this is count of translated labels, and you see all this data that is coming real time, and you can see that the labels are currently available in uh, 6,804 languages in English, and followed by Dutch, followed by Arabic, followed by Ukrainian, and then French. So this is real time statistic. So you could also do the same for description, also do for aliases, etc. And you could get the overall translation statistics if you want. So there are some other things that we will discuss la later, if, I, if time permits. But uh, you could navigate all the, uh, all the different um, items in on the left hand uh, left hand side, and you could see there are a lot of things that could really help to see what things are happening in WD Prop. Uh, so um, so this is like for example, Wikidata properties. You, these are the properties that are currently available. But as I said some time back, properties could be deleted. And this, you see that these are the properties that were deleted, starting from P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. These are all been deleted, and you could get these things just from the uh, from this uh, the statistics board. And here, so same thing. Then the next thing that was that interested me was to understand the translation pattern. So, for example, we sometimes we feel that some languages, so English is created first and followed by maybe Dutch, maybe follow or maybe French, and maybe after French it could be Arabic. So these things could be interesting to know. So for that, we started to look at the idea of translation path. What exactly how things. Are, are translated. So again, if you go to the property page, you could click on any property. Sorry, um, maybe I can show. So you could click on any property, and you could just say, "Give me the translation path." It takes some time, but it will start b bringing the data because it's real time. So you get the data coming from. All this, so you get the date, you get uh, the t what things have been changed, what when was something deleted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Why it is important? For example, you see this is something that happened on 2017, and there has been label has been removed. This is this is official website. So imagine you have removed the label from the official website. So anybody who is doesn't know, sorry, this is country. Anybody who doesn't know. P17, what it is, cannot even understand because the label has been deleted by the person. So this type of vandalism exists. This is another example where completely all the language labels have been deleted. English, French, Spanish, German, everything has been deleted. There are no labels, there are no description, there are no labels. So you could find these type of things from the translation path and it could, just because of the color code, you could see what happened on, on what day and you could check uh, exactly because it is also linked if you click on any of this, you could also get a link to the revision identifier, what exactly happened on during that trip, particular revision. So this is coming from revision history. So if you click on any of this, you get what exactly is happening in, in any particular uh, revision. So how did we build it? Just if you come back here, you see there is a, something called a comment. On the right hand, uh, on, on the right hand side, you see there are something called added ma Malay al 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 aliases, added British English aliases, changed Esperanto label, added IO label, etc. So we made use of this in information. For example, for label description and aliases, if you add something, you have some sort of comment which starts with WB set label add, or if it is updated, you have WB set label set, and if you remove something, you say it is removed. And may, b based on this type of information, we were able to get uh, build such a uh, translation path. OK, this is good. <laughs> but what happened is that this type, of, this type of information, this type of things, just using the comment, it is useful for building real-time tools, just like what I showed you for WDTROP. But it is very difficult to um, uh, uh, th uh, detect when ch there are multiple changes. For example, if you have seen boards activity on Wikidata, some boards make multi put multiple labels in one single edit. In that case, you cannot find what happened because you do not have WB set label that particular language. So you do not have a set of languages along with your comment. So, so these are some problems if you want to use this type of approach. 
So what we did, we decided to make, uh, collect the data so that, and we decided to publicly uh, make this data available. Uh, um, and uh, what we did, we wanted to make use of content. So what we did, we started with every revision and we took the content of each revision. So, and we took the next revision and we uh, uh, decided to find the difference between these two revisions to find what exactly changes, which of the labels got changed. Because of that, we got much more uh, interesting information, much more accurate information than the previous approach because it is very important for doing analysis and you need, it is important that you make use of correct data. So you have four columns that were used here, times time, property, language type, etc. And you get this data uh, in this format. It is publicly available. So what, what, what does this data give me? So this data gives me information that um, currently almost 4,000 uh, almost uh, 4,000 plus 4,500 uh, properties have labels between 0 and 20. So there are a lot of properties who do not have more than 20, uh, 20 multilingual labels. And there are only 1,500 language uh, properties that have been translated up to 40. And yesterday, if you have, were present for, uh, in the, uh, during the talk of Lydia Pinster, she talked about P18. So P18 is something here. So you could see there are only a couple of six or seven properties that were that are currently ha having all the one. Uh, she, uh, P18 has, has 154 translation. Just to give that idea. So there are one property which is having 154 multilingual labels. There are properties which has only one label in particular label, and the average number of um, uh, labels are, are, is only 21, and the standard deviation is 20. Okay, what exactly, what, what next we would like to say? So you have seen something similar in the previous, in the real-time data. This is from the collected data. So this is what are the top languages that are coming up in the results. So these we have seen. But my next point is, are there combinations possible? For example, if there is French, there is Arabic. If there is Arabic, there is uh, some other language. If there is French, there is Ukrainian, or uh, etc. Can we find such type of combinations in a translation uh, data set? So yes, it is possible. So if you see this count, this frequent item sets, so I've just shown uh, seven of them, you find that there are combinations that are possible. OK? Let us say, let, if, is there a, a possibility of having four labels? Like, if there is English, there's also possibility to find Dutch, Arabic, Ukrainian. If there is English, there's possible to find Dutch, French, and Arabic, etc., etc. So you also find, you can also find a lot of combinations. Why it is important? Because it is important to know if, for example, if we have multilingual speakers who are contributors, who can speak multiple languages, if we are able to find any particular pattern that, is help, that helps us to find that if we tell this person to translate, and a new property is created to translate this label, because he already speaks uh, multiple languages, we can suggest these things to the previous user. So let's just uh, show you one example. This is the complete translation path that has obtained from different languages. So here, what we have done is we selected two small minority land. It's like Tagalog and Kumpa, uh, Kampa Nengen, which, is, uh, uh, which are minority languages from Philippines. And you see that there is a strong transfer between Tagalog and uh, Kampa uh, So this type of things can be detected when you have such, such type of translation results. So that is the, another advantage. Okay, to, to conclude my work, I would like to say this is uh, important that we understand how uh, properties are translated because if you want to d extract data from Wikipedia, you need to know what are the local languages, what are the words for the, in the local languages that are being used, what is image in, in French, what is image in, in Punjabi, what is image in Hindi or any other language. So that is important so for importing data. And tomorrow, of course, if all data, if, if we are able to fetch this data to Wikidata, we could also use uh, new projects like Wikidata Bridge, which could use to uh, fill other info boxes like multiple link, uh, uh, multiple, uh, multilingual Wikipedia articles, and this could be really helpful. So with that, I would like to thank you. And if you have questions, I would like to be happy to, I would be happy to answer them.
could find anybody with here. questions. Yes. Yep. So, uh, uh, what you're doing is mainly analyzing how this yes, is all yes. happening. Do you know if there are initiatives or like if there are tools which can help make this easier, like translation of properties? Yes, because like, tools like, for example, what to translate from Wikipedia, Wikimedia Foundation is helpful. But I have not seen this is not currently integrated with Wikidata. What to translate is only integrated with certain languages of uh, on Wikipedia, but not on all the la on Wiki Wikidata. But that could be really interesting. Yes, that, thank you for bringing this up, because just imagine if we know that a person has been labeling in multiple languages, and we also have this what to translate tool, and we have this layer, statistics, which we have this data coming from, what to, uh, from this type of pro property translation, it is easier to suggest the person that new articles, ha new properties have been created, and then you could suggest. So it's, right now it's not integrated to Wikidata. Anybody else? Maybe I have I'm one sorry. question myself that comes back to it. Maybe is, is does anybody know of, of working lists on translating properties? Sorry. Does anybody know of working lists about translating properties? Like I can imagine from your statistics, you could say uh, these are the. This is the top hundred uh, most widely used properties Mostly, yes, who yes, lack, yes, tran who lack yeah, translations yeah, yeah. in this translation, and this language. Yeah, no, there is. I think. Um, there are ways by, for example, you could browse by data types, browse by uh, property classes. For example, here is like something called property classes, where people have created projects. Oh, it's taking time, but so you have projects, and you could say, uh, how would I describe? What are the, for example, if there, what are the properties that I could describe? So this you could get for de describing IEEE standard version. You need addition number, you need addition translation, etc. So if you have a targeted uh, thing, you could search for what type of classes. For example, if you're working in, in GLAM or history, so you could say, what is history related? Any day document are there? So you could say historical, and you could find historical. Okay, this is a property class. Go to this property class, and sorry, where is it? It is so. It is having something called marry me ID. So it could have. So people have been trying to use property classes to link objects. So that helps if you are working on a particular project, and you could find that properties related to that. Okay. Uh, but you, but your tool could quite easily integrate the make make a list of let's say uh, the, uh, the top, top top let's say hundred yes. most uh, widely uh, used properties yes. who haven't got. Uh, um, I don't know, Punjabi label, let's say. <laughs> for that, I will just Which show one more thing. Okay, tell me any language, for example, uh, let us say Netherlands, because it has very well, it's performing very well. So I would say, uh, translated labels. Okay, so this is translate, sorry, there are. Like, for example, Hindi. So you hear what happens. Here you just see any properties that are needed translation. So they are like 6,647 properties that needs translation in a particular language. So you could click on any language that you want and, and get the data. And, get, and you could get the list of where people need support. So, OK, yeah, this could be interesting to link with property uh, uh, usage. How many people, is it really top? Is it under the top 10? So suggest those 10 top 100 in that language. That would be interesting, yes. That's good. Just what you asked, there is a list of top 100 most used properties on Wikidata. Uh, it's, it's on Wikidata. So, yeah, it's there. Uh, under Wikidata database reports slash top 100 properties. Top right. So we could, uh, one, one could thing could be that we could just link this and suggest it. Could you maybe add, add the link to the Etherpad and then maybe... Yes, yeah, that would be... This uh, information can come together. Okay. If there's no other questions, then we will conclude here. And uh, we have uh, like two, three minutes break uh, until we start with the next speaker. Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs>